And because of interest rates, now you owe me $20,000. You will say, I don't have money to give you. And if you don't, I take your car and a piece of your house. This is how debt works. And after three years of traveling the world, I noticed that this is exactly what China is doing. For example, take the small island nation of Sri Lanka. This developing country needs money, and China has a lot of it. So Sri Lanka took billions of dollars in Chinese loans, just there to be taken. And with that, they built skyscrapers, highways, airports, and shipping ports. The country grew and prospered. <laughs> but a few years later, this easy money came with interest rates, and Sri Lanka was so much in debt that it couldn't pay back China its money. And the only way out was to give China control of what they had built. In other words, Sri Lanka lost a piece of its home to China because of debt. The Chinese money trap. And it's a real thing I saw all over the world. In Papua New Guinea, I saw $2 billion in loans given by the Chinese to build the skyscrapers, infrastructures, and ports. But there is no way this remote developing country can pay it back all its interest rate. And the only way out is to give China control of the country. In the Maldives, Pakistan, Malaysia, Laos, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa, the same thing is happening. are struggling to pay back Chinese loans. If you look closely, all these infrastructure projects like highways, ports, and bridges connect to China through the sea or through the land to form something far bigger, far more powerful than just a bridge. A new Silk Road. The world is already made by China, and I think slowly it will be owned by China. Don't get me wrong, building bridges, ports, highways, and airports is a great thing for the people of the country, but they come at a very high cost. And when these countries can't pay back the loan, these countries will lose their power. One thing my parents had taught me is that there's no such thing as a free lunch or a free ride. So if we're not careful with our money or other people's money, then we better start learning Chinese. Yeah, Joe. So it's really sad, right? How China is going to own us just because they give us some money to build bridges, to build railways. You know? And uh, most of the time, this is what is happening in our country today. We borrow money, we fail to return the money or pay back the money, and uh, other countries keep on owning us. Because we don't know how to raise these plants. But because we do, but because we are not told that this is the way to go, this is how to fund our project, this is the way to fund our ideas. So we end up going to borrow money. So in this presentation, I'm going to take you through how to fund large capital projects. So uh, what is ailing us? We have ideas, we have research, we do, we have innovation, and we do a lot of research. But at the end of the day, we cannot fund these ideas. We cannot fund the research, and we cannot fund the innovation. The whole process. We get nothing. We don't have anything of our own. Just because we cannot fund these ideas, we cannot fund our research, and we cannot fund innovation. Uh, this morning, I was sharing with <laughs> Chase here, like how our children, when we are, they are very young, we, they have a lot of ideas. We are tengeneza magari, we are project, we are tengeneza generators. But we are not good. Uh, in our education system, we put our, like, at the end of the day, we don't have those innovation after people have gone through the education sector. So, in education, or in the support knowledge, we have five steps. We will have exploration. This is where like, uh, you have an idea and you want really to know what is the problem that is affecting us in our countries. 
what is affecting us. So you do a lot of exploration and you find out, like, and you come up with a solution. What happens is, in Kenya today, we are able to do exploration and research because it doesn't cost much and you can easily find grants from, uh, from other people for exploration and research. And sometimes we also do publication, but even when we do this, this research, uh, uh, exploration, research and publication, they are very important back here in Kenya. And then, the point where we have translation and application, this is a very big gap and it is not done at all in Kenya. And if it is done, it's in the university and it remains there. For example, you go to Jomo uh, Kenyatta, you find the big year that, that is translation, they have already come up with a product, but at the end of the day, you never find this year that in the market. Even uh, like, uh, they don't care about this in the market because we don't do what we call commercialization. Like we don't apply that uh, what we are doing in the university. We don't ever find it in the market. So this is where Ubrika comes in. Like if I you can fund this research and project, you can fund translation and application so that everything that is done in the university can come into the common manaichi. So um I, I don't know if many of you have seen this uh, fountain, uh, fountain of knowledge in Nairobi University. This is what you go to the fountain of knowledge. Like, you go to the universities, you learn and come up with products. But in our society, these universities are totally cut out of the world. They have said no to the common Wanaichi. Engineering going on in the universities, but we still go on like da -da 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 -kama -hi. people are still building it in the you know technologies are 17th century in Oko, right? So uh, uh, people in the universities have said no to them uh, to, they don't want to interact with the common Wanaichi. They call themselves learned and Sisi and if they come out here on Akuta Kina interact the same way. So uh, so what we hope to become the ivory tower, uh, the founder of knowledge, it became the ivory tower. And here is where Yubrika comes in to bridge the gap between the people in the universities and the people who, is doing, who are doing research in the university to the community. To bridge the gap between the university and the community. And that will really activate the meaning of all kind of knowledge. So uh, let us take us, let us go through what we know. We know that, right? Like, if you have a project you want to fund, we know that we fund it through debt. And uh, most of the time, this is what is being um, advertised even in our social media. Fuliza, Tala, right? And borrowing. This is what we do. Killer, killer time, if you want some money, you just go and borrow. And it doesn't even stop at the personal level. It even goes into the national level. Our government went out to China, they borrowed money to build the rail gate, and you see where we are heading to. From so we all know that you cannot build a nation through borrowed money. You cannot, if if I tell you want to build a nation, you have to come up with a way to get your your funds. But you cannot build a nation with borrowed money. So if you borrow, you find that you are you are carrying the whole world behind your back as a country. And this this is what you want to avoid. So what is the alternative of borrowing? This is not all, this is what you are not told at all. So the, uh, Ubrika is a five billion dollar company. So we ask ourselves, how do we fund it? So through financial engineering, this is basically it's a big name, but the whole meaning of financial engineering it's about shares. You buy shares, then you have money creation. Money creation is now where Ubrika is coming. And this is how we fund our projects. So uh, let us let me take the previous uh, how we fund financial engineering and money creation home. Like um, let's take for example, what if when they wanted to build the rail gauge, the SGR, what if the Kenyan president came to us and told us, you know what, we have this big project, we want to build a rail gauge, and uh, we want you to be part of it, we want you to own this project, let us own, let us benefit from our own project. And how many are we in Kenya today? We are like 45, what? 47 million. So 47 million. You can imagine. If I turn that angle, put your hand We contribute a hundred bob per person. After come up on our total, you make sure you contribute your hundred bob. We can do even four months of a hundred bob, right? And we would be able to raise the money that is needed to build this rail gate with no debt. 
it our own and we benefit from it, right? Anything that it is bringing in, if we are doing trade from, with other countries, it gets back to us and we benefit from it that way. So, funding ideas and innovation is the gate pass from poverty. And in our session today, and since we are talking about Ubricoin and shares, we, we want us to come out of the way we look at money. Let us look money as a science, as a, the science of money. Let me uh, give you an example. When we talk about science, we talk about uh, innovation, like for example, you see um, message, messages, WhatsApp, YouTube, social. So we want also to think about money the same way. Let us think about money as a science, right? Uh, so, this is your chance to make history. We start with you because to show people how it is done. This is something that has been done before, but not in Africa. And if it has been done in Africa, it's in very small scale, in form of Harambe's and church fundraising, right? Beauty what you have, we make our own Harambe's and fundraising of issue by giving your ownership of what you contribute and issuing certificates. That is what is lacking in our fundraising and Harambe's today. Whenever you fundraise, you are never given a certificate, but as you break a we fundraise, but we give you a certificate and you own the project themselves, right? So we finish building a Ubrica and before then we get another brilliant mind with a brilliant idea and we own it and fund it, right? Because so many people have ideas. So we are going to build Ubrica and then we build another project that is coming up. And when China thinks they own part of us, they find we, we, we own more. We can even now build an electric train. Like, when something is repeated to us more than one time, you tend to remember, right? So I'm going to take you through Ubrica project as a whole and what we represent and how Ubricoin and uh, Ubricoin shares and everything pertaining Ubrica comes in as a whole, how we join this. So uh, I'll do an introduction to Ubrica. Uh, so as you may know, Ubrica is an acronym for Ustawi Biomedical Research and Industry Centers of Innovation and Industry Centers of Africa. So uh, the company was started back in 2014 in US, and uh, it was started to solve three fundamental problems in healthcare: that is, lack of access to health services, poor quality of health services, and the high cost of, of care. Uh, we are all Kenyans, right? Programs very well. You know that there is lack of access of health services, right? We know that you can go to a hospital and feel like what I got from the hospital is not really what I deserve or what, how I was treated in the hospital. I think they could have done more than that, right? And above all, we have a, a problem with high cost of care. This is a problem that has been affecting us a lot. And even people sometimes choose to go abroad because it's easier and cheaper to go abroad than being treated here. Uh, if you solve the problem of access, quality, and cost through the Ubrica, we call them Ubrica pillars. In the, in the Ubrica pillars, we have the smart contracts where we have Ubicoin and shares. We have the human engagement. Uh, we, under human engagement, we have soft agenda. Then we have the projects which include Ubica retail clinical centers, the science and technology parks, and biomedical industrial city. So uh, to, to, overcome, to overcome the lack of access to healthcare, uh, we have two problems in access of healthcare. Number one, we have physical access. Where, for example, you find like uh, you are in a place where you cannot access physical, like there is no hospital around you. Then you can go to the hospital, yes, and maybe the hospital is near you. But can you afford the healthcare in that clinic? Maybe, for example, that is what you call realized access. You can go to the hospital, but you cannot afford the care that is being offered in the hospital. So to solve the, the problem of physical access. Ubrica proposed to build Ubrica retail clinical centers and these clinical centers they are going to be in uh, in all counties in Kenya and we want to build each county should have one and in those counties that have a bigger population we propose to build more than one clinic an ordinary clinic this is a clinic with three things number one, very efficient workshop so you find that uh, our products today and if I 
as a person, if you go, for example, to our market, maybe Taskies, and or the, the markets that usually go, and you find there are oranges from South Africa and oranges from Kenya. Because of quality, most of the time we prefer those those products that are foreign, that are coming from other country. So when we were, we were thinking about building Ubrica retail clinical centers, we were thinking how can we improve the quality of the things that are found in our markets, uh, in these products. So the clinic will have a value addition workshop. And this value addition workshop workshop is very easy because the other time we went to Jemo Kenyatta University and we found that this guy they make product they make um, products to like dry the fruits you see if a farm fruits when you for example bananas if bananas are, are not like they are very perishable you cannot keep them for long but they have a way of drying these bananas to powder and then making candy so if a child you can do that and you already have that technology it's a matter of like how do we get these pr products or machines or technology to our market it is through the the, the ubrica retail clinical stores and then we have a retail store a retail store is whereby you go to at the same time you can also go to the market. This mother are out there, or for example, you do you sell things, you are a trader in the market. You don't have to choose. Should I go to the market or should I go to to the hospital? You can a mother can take the child to the clinic and at the same time go to the market at the same time, right? So retail clinical centers, they have a retail store and then finally it has a clinic itself. So we have how to solve the realized access. We have some agenda and many projects. The money project is the Ubricoin, of course, and with the Ubricoin, we increase the supply of money. Uh, we found that how we understand the money in our society today, it's not the right way. Like, how money is created. We are, we, we are meant to believe that the government is the only uh, entity that is supposed to create money, but we go to all this wrong. We, also, we usually say that, um, oh, sorry, we, are, we usually say that money is an agreement of symbols, what we can agree me and you to use as money, and we exchange it for value and power, right? It influences the exchange of value and power. So that is what money is. And now with blockchain technology, it has given us a platform to create money with all the qualities of money. You know the qualities of money, it, can, it should be divisible, you know, portable, uh, such. Now, Ubricoin has that capability and it is very secure. So, we change how we redistribute our money. Our money today is given to those people who already have money. In, in, in the case that, for example, if you have you want a loan, you have to go to, you have to have a, a collateral number so that you can get a loan. So, basically, those people who have money are the, one who is, are the ones who are is being issued money. So, how can we change this? We use Ubricoin to redistribute wealth and provide financial inclusion. Then, the problem of money is access. We can also facilitate, facilitate trade through Sokajanja. In that, in most of our societies today, uh, we find that we, we, have, we don't have money because we cannot sell our own produce. But now with the online store, which one of uh, my, my colleagues will talk about, now we can help people in the communities to sell what they produce, to have money to go to the clinics. Overcoming the uh, poor quality of health services. Basically, we, we are going to build science and technology parks adjacent to each university here in Kenya. There are 66 public university, so we are going to build uh, 66 univer university science and technology parks. And in this science and technology park, we focus on quality of education or quality of knowledge. We make sure whatever is being produced in this uh, university, the research that is being in that the university, it is translated. You can find that in, uh, knowledge into the market. You can find whatever is being produced in the in the um, in the university, in the market, in the industries, the, that that research does not remain just in the university. So, um, the cost of care in our health in healthcare, we propose to build a biomedical. We call it Ubrica One. This is uh, it's going to solve the the problem of relevance paradox. What I mean by relevance paradox is. Uh, you find that we know so much about malaria, for instance, right? A lot of research is being done here in Kenya about research, uh, about malaria. We know so much, but at the same time, it is killing us. 
Where does that knowledge go to? It is because most of the time, those people who fact we usually say that uh, the person the knowledge benefit those people who fund it. So the type of example Kendri is being fund is funding uh, other institutions are funding for knowledge and research in Kenya. They are going to benefit themselves. We say that um and they bring uh, uh, they fund a certain project. When attacker they do it their way. They don't consider us. They want us to Wanataka Kenya, Wanafikidia ndi watafanya just because they have funded us. Now, the most important of the Ubrika work is the self-sustaining biomedical industrial city located on 4,330 acres of land. This is a very large project. We have a medical campus, a research district, a residential community, an industrial park, and a recreational district. Ubrika work is planned and designed to meet the full range of healthcare needs, including curative, preventive care of those residing and working in the medical city as well as those visiting the medical city for medical tourism and other purposes. So uh, the biomedical city is going to act as an epicenter. You see, the, the, on the science and technology part in the counties will be like the one that is collecting data. For example, if we have here Kakamega, right? And for example, we have a USC here and we have a, a, a uh, science and technology park. We can do research here about malaria in this place. We do drugs because I usually say like before drugs were there, those people who were there before us, right? They used to treat malaria, right? So they used to treat their own diseases. We are doing it. That is knowledge that is not captured in our our, our new technologies or in our new methods of treating diseases. But these uh, science and technology parks and the USCCs, they can capture that. We inter integrate the, co the, the current knowledge in medicine and the knowledge that was there before these technologies came in. Come in. And by that, we improve the quality, we, improve the, uh, we reduce the cost of healthcare, and at the same time, we improve access in uh, real life, real life and physical access. Thank you very much. My name is Susan from Research Department. That is all for me today.